All right, what we're going to go over today is how to weld using the gas tungsten arc welding process in the 1F flat position with a T-joint. This would be like the second lab you would do if you were uh, starting out in an introductory welding class for TIG. Uh, the first one would be like those 4-inch plates that I have a video on, which I'll put in the card if you want to check that out. But this would be about the second uh, lab that you would do. It's probably one of the easiest welds you can do. That's why it's the second lab that you would do, all right? So what we're going to do it on is uh, either pickled and oiled or stainless steel, eighth of an inch. Uh, you can use regular 836, which you have to grind the uh, mill scale off, and even the pickled and oiled you want to clean off because it leaves a little bit of residue from the oil. Uh, pickled and oil basically reduces the amount of mill scale that's on it, that's why you use it. Uh, you can get away with stainless, just use stainless. We're going to use pickled and oiled carbon steel. So um, that's our base metal. Our um, Filler metal is going to be ER70S-6, it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch diameter, we're going to use 100% argon, and I went a little higher on the amps and liked it, so we went 125 on your amperage, and remember, uh, you have a rheostat, so you have a foot pedal, and the further you push it down, the hotter it gets, if you're getting too hot, you ease up on it, if you floor it, you're going to be at 125, that's the max if the pedal is all the way down to the floor, okay? Uh, 30 cubic feet per hour, that's going to be our shielding gas uh, pressure. And then we also put our post purge around, it was around 7 seconds. So when you get done, you hold that there as it cools. That post purge goes on and make sure you don't get atmospheric contamination upon completion of the weld. All right. Now over here I kind of did a drawing of the, uh, the T-joint. It's eighth of an inch, four inches long, and they're one inch wide. So they're pretty small. All right. Now the 1F position, a lot of people think that this is the 1F position because it's flat on the table, but that's not true. This is 1F. It's tilted up so that the weld is flat. So don't confuse this with this right here. This would actually be 2F, and that would be the um, third lab that you would do, all right? So what I've done is i got two cameras set up. i got one that's going to focus right down on the weld. We're going to look at those welds first. Then I have one that's going to show me doing the overall weld, and then we'll look at the completed welds at the end. So what we're going to do is get out of the lab, and we're going to start this. Okay, here's the setup that we got going on here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see the, the 1F position. So it's tilted so that the weld is completely flat, it's fused in the corner, and then you can see I added a little plate to the edge of the table so I can slide my hand down, keep me steady, and there's the filler uh, wire right there. So that's the setup for our 1F. Let's get our machine settings now, and we'll get into this thing. Okay, that buzzing noise is the machine. It's actually on. I actually cranked it up to 125 here. I usually I run around 110, but I, I cranked it up and I like it. So that's what we're going to go with. This is a Precision TIG Lincoln 275. For 125, that's if the pedal's all the way down. We're on remote. We're down here on TIG. Direct current electrode negative. We're off and running. Our post flow is around seven or eight, I do believe. We'll take a look at our, uh, our cubic feet per hour on our shielding gas now, and then we're going to get into this. All right, here's a shot of the flow meter. Go ahead and hit the gas, Tony. And you can see that ball is right about 30 cubic feet per hour. It's on the argon, so we're all set. Let's get into it. All right, so we've got the arc to initiate here. You can see it's getting wet on one side, wet on the other, dab, and then I surge the pedal down to get it to fuse on both sides. Then we just start running it across. So because this camera is so focused, I have to do with the beginning of the weld, then the middle, and then the end. So there's going to be three segments here. And then I have another camera that I'm going to do the whole weld uh, here after we're done with the three segments. And you can see this is just running across. Just dabbing as it needs. It, it takes off whatever it wants from the wire. You don't have to jam right in there. You want to stay on the leading edge and just let the weld kind of suck what it wants off of the wire. So we're done with the beginning. What I'll do is move to the to the middle here. Here's the middle. You can see you're striking the arc. You can see it's getting liquid. And then you just continue on with the weld. So restarting with TIG is pretty simple. You just get the um, crater where you're stopped from the first weld, get the crater to start to melt, and then start adding metal as you go. You can see right there I got a little crooked. Just dab right across the plates. So this is the middle part. We're going to move into the end here. We're extinguishing the arc, letting that post purge hit. 
moving to the end. And again, start the arc, get it liquid, start dabbing. I'm going to dab a little early there, but stay on the leading edge. Just let that flow right down the joint. When you end the arc, you're going to want to kind of ease off the pedal, do a circular motion, let it go from liquid to solid very slowly. And you can see right here, circular motion. Yep. And now we're going to let that post purge go. There it goes. It just turned off. And here's the, the whole weld all at once. And again, you see me bounce back and forth, get the puddle started, and now we're just going to flow down this joint. You can see I'm just dabbing right down across, across the joint. Staying on the leading edge. Moving steady. Until you get to the end. And again, you're going to do a circular motion when you're extinguishing the arc. And kind of let that post purge disperse until it turns off. Preventing atmospheric contamination on the end of the weld. You can see we're getting to the end here. Extinguish that arc. As you're getting towards the end, you kind of got to ease up on the pedal, too. You can see there's the post purge. And it just turned off. All right, here's the final look at one in the 1F position. And we were um, having some trouble when we first started because we discovered that some of our filler metal was rusty. And I'll show you another one here in a second of where we had really dirty filler metal in the beginning, and then it straightened out in the end, and it kind of got dirty again. And that can be a problem. This has to be really clean. All TIG welding is done on, you know, no mill scale, oil, water. It's got to be perfectly clean, and so does your filler. So let's take a look at that one before we go here. All right, so we tried to do this uh, pickled and oiled, and we didn't clean it. And we didn't, ha and we didn't have a uh, clean filler metal, which we didn't know at the time, but you can see it's really dirty right up through here. Then you can see it cleaned up right here. Hit some more nastiness right here, and then got clean again. So make sure it's clean, or you are not going to succeed. That's all we got for today. Let's take one last look at the good one, and we'll get out of here. All right, one last look at the last one we did. Looks pretty good. You're done with your 1F. You can move on to your 2F now. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching and subscribing to TV Weld, and we are out of here.